the world's most obedient Secretary of State, Grant Shapps. Even he is saying, come on, we need to spend more. We need to spend 3%. Some might say more than that. Back in the 50s, we spent 7%. Uh, Hunt made a big mistake last week, didn't he? Yes, and uh, Grant Shapps, uh, don't forget, is uh, pitching to become the next leader. So he's discovered that suddenly his department is the one people have their eyes on when it comes to government policy, conservative policy, which is the defence of the realm. And I think that uh, Hunt made a dreadful mistake, and of course so did Rishi Sunak, who is, after all, the First Lord of the Treasury, in not putting something towards uh, defence. And I think they had roughly $10 billion to spend. They could have pushed it a bit further. It costs, say, $7 billion to cut 1p off income tax, $5 billion for 1p off uh, national insurance. They could easily have made that the seven billion in, uh, income tax cut and five billion for defence. I think that would have gone down uh, enormously well, not just with conservative stalwarts, but with people, voters right across the country, who are very worried about what's happening on our eastern borders and in China. Um, can we let's talk about Labour for a second, shall we, uh, Trevor? Uh, Labour's deputy leader Angela Rayner has said uh, she would like to see Diane Abbott back as a Labour MP. Diane is, of course, uh, suspended uh, from the Parliamentary Party uh, for writing a racist, anti-Semitic letter to the Observer. Uh, the defence from Labour is, well, she said sorry. And, uh, you know, now someone's being racist towards her. Just because someone is racist towards you, of course, I'm talking about Frank Hester, uh, who none of us have ever, ever heard of until a couple of days ago, uh, who's donated all that money and said racist things about uh, uh, um, Diane Abbott. Just because someone's racist to you, it doesn't exonerate your own racism, does it? Uh, and meanwhile, they say, oh, well, Diane said sorry, and Frank Hester hasn't. He has. He said, I am deeply sorry. Uh, I I don't think that exonerates him. But uh, Labour want double standards, don't they? Oh, if you're racist about a person of colour, that's worse than being racist about uh, a Jewish person, which is why Diane Abbott is currently suspended from the Labour Party. Well, I think anything goes if you're uh, attacking the Conservative Party or what Angela Rayner would say, a Tory scum. <laughs> so it doesn't matter about racism or anything else. And you have to remember that uh, Angela Rayner is a Corbynite and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and Diane Abbott is Jeremy Corbyn's ex-pillion passenger when they were boyfriend and girlfriend. So there is a link there. And it is two-faced, I think, because what, uh, what uh, Diane was saying about Jews was totally unacceptable. Her um, uh, apology was not as effusive, if anything, if there was an apology. Uh, as uh, Hester's um, apology. And I think he probably is genuinely appalled by his own conduct several years ago. I mean, I know uh, Diane Abbott, and in person she's much nicer than you might think. But she is infuriating. <laughs> Uh, now, Trevor, it's been a while since we were graced with your presence here on uh, the Good Ship Cross Talk, so I'd quite like to sort of cast your mind back to the big news of last week, which was Lee Anderson joining yeah. Reform, and ask your opinion on that, because my understanding is that Anderson and party leader Richard Tice are up in Ashfield today, posing for photos with pints in the good old-fashioned Brexiteer manner. Um, do you think this was a bit of a, 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 a boon for Reform to get Lee Anderson, or do you think there may be trouble ahead? I don't think there's any trouble ahead from the uh, acquisition of Lee Anderson for the Reform Party. In fact, I'd be very surprised if he is the last to switch sides. Um, I think the problem for the Tories is that whether they like it or not, the majority of the British voting public agree with every word that uh, Lee Anderson said. Uh, if not every word, then the general sentiment of what he said, which is that uh, immigration has been allowed under 14 years of Tory rule to run amok. And also that in the process, we have imported some very dangerous and unpleasant people who don't like the way we do business or anything about our politics and would do anything possible to stop it, block it or even kill it. Yeah, I mean, this this is uh, one of the scourges of our parliament at the moment. Uh, these MPs, 
seem to uh, love nothing more than shouting about what we're not allowed to say. Mm. Uh, they want to kill off... The language is so important. You can't use that language. It is a form of censorship. They love to censor themselves. They love to censor us. And uh, Lee Anderson has committed, in parliamentary terms, the cardinal sin of telling it like it is. Mm. What is it that worries MPs so much about someone like Lee Anderson who just stands up and says what we're all thinking. It's very difficult to understand the Conservative Party, but it does explain why it is at uh, sub 20% <laughs> in the polls at the moment. On the other hand, I mean, nobody really wants Labour to take its place. This is a, a, a gesture of desperation by the, by the Tory party to try to recover some ground. But they've done everything wrong and they've done it all wrong for quite a long period of time, under every single leader they've had, uh, that's five in eight years, uh, they've got it wrong on immigration, including Boris Johnson, you know, the hero of the, of the party as a, as a vote winner. But he got uh, immigration completely around his neck and is as much responsible for this as anybody else. And I simply do not see uh, the Tories under Rishi Sunak doing anything whatsoever substantively to put this right or even to indicate they want to put it right. No, I couldn't agree more. Uh, now, in terms of the whole uh, Hester scandal and the £10 million, now suspected to be potentially £15 million that he's donated to the Conservative Party, and these, this clamour that uh, because he said some bad things a while ago that he must get his money back from them, do you think the Conservative Party should bow to the pressure and give that money back? Uh, and do you think they actually will? Uh, no, I don't, but I think they will. You're right. I think that they will be dragged kicking and screaming, as they were in the first place when it became clear that what Esther said was unacceptable. Suddenly, he is deemed to be a racist. And so suddenly it will be deemed that they cannot cling to that 15 million. Um, they're going to have to scramble around all over the place to find some uh, funder to fill the gap. But um, I just don't think they've got the courage or the nerve to cling to any position for more than 24 hours of adverse publicity. And when they cave in, you know what will happen, everyone will go, well, why did you take so long to make this decision? <laughs> Every single time, it's the same story. Uh, Rishi Sunak uh, said uh, yesterday that uh, there definitely won't be an election on May the 2nd, uh, leaving the door open to another date, possibly in May, or do you think it'll be uh, in October? When are you calling the election, uh, Trevor? Well, it never was going to be May the 2nd, frankly, and uh, I did write this in my column because the reason was, which was explained to me is that there's nothing good around in terms of news for the Conservative Party at the moment. They're clinging desperately to the hope that the economy will start showing signs of recovery with lower inflation, lower interest rates and lower mortgage rates and a bit more signs of growth. <clears throat> they've also got through that period, brief, uh, brief period of recession. So they're banking everything that they've got, which isn't very much, to be honest, on a, an economic recovery in time for an October election.